Hello everybody and welcome to the channel and as promised we have the Niji E40 laser module that came in and we'll be doing an unboxing and review of this laser module today. It's a dual diode 11 plus watt optical module and we'll see what it can do. But before we get to the unboxing don't forget to smash that subscribe button. All right, let's get to it. All right, well, let's see what's in the box. So, uh, indiscreet box in the, in the, from FedEx today. All right, we have some hose. And this was... Uh, Sealed. I opened it a little bit earlier so we could do this a little more gracefully. Some foam packaging. Get that out of the way. We got some Allen wrenches. Mounting bracket. Some cords, silica, and what is this? Ah, okay, an eight millimeter to four millimeter adapter. It looks like it's for your hose. A couple little boards here. This one here. It doesn't really have much of the laser test module, version 1.2. And input put PWM voltage measure. laser adapter version 1.1 this is pretty much the same i've seen on m almost all their boards their lasers and what's important here's our laser module so here we got the ninja e40 i have another one uh, of these I got an older version it's the 4 in 4630 this is an upgrade for that and if you look inside here you can see they got this um, the air assist module built into this one pretty nice it looks pretty solid can't wait to test it out there you got it now it's time to put this guy to work. All right, we got the module on the machine. And if you notice from the last video, I've added this adjustable Z axis and it's been really nice. Uh, I picked it up on AliExpress for, I think it was under $20 and it's worked out really well. I'll put a link down in the description for this. And uh, if you see you're in a need for it, pick one up. Now let's do some cutting and engraving tests and see what it can do.
All right, everybody. So as you can see, we put the unit through its paces and we did a lot of different types of tests. And overall, I'm pretty happy about the power output that this thing has and its versatility. As you can see, we were able to uh, engrave on stainless steel without any kind of marking ink and it came out pretty decent. Um, hopefully in the future, I'm gonna do another video of marking on this stainless steel and aluminum and we'll get into more details and tune up those settings a little bit better. Um, as you can see on this particular one, my Captain America image probably wasn't the best quality to start with and so it didn't come out very well, but this one came out really nice and it, it's pretty clear. And then we're also able to engrave on anodized aluminum. I made this business card out of the logo and don't forget to like, subscribe to see what's next, okay? And then um, we're also able to cut a black acrylic pretty well. Um, this is 2.5 millimeter acrylic and I was able to get through it with 120 millimeters in one pass, um, but it was a little more consistent with two passes at that speed. Now on the six millimeter acrylic, I was able to do that same speed, 120 millimeters a second in four passes. Um, and I also did it at 150 millimeters per second in five passes. And they both come out pretty similar as far as quality of the cut. Um, but it did really good and I'm pretty excited about it. Now for the coaster here with the What's Next DIY logo, that is a half inch pine. And I was able to get through it in um, seven passes. I had it set to 11, but I could see the laser passing through it at about seven. And that was at 250 millimeters per second. Um, so it did really well on that. I could probably get that less passes if I ran it a little bit slower, but I still have some tuning left to figure out on this unit. Now for the three millimeter plywood here, um, I was able to get through uh, the three millimeter, pl millimeter plywood at 300 millimeters per second in one pass, but it wasn't very consistent at one pass as far as making it all the way through. Doing it at two passes is, was a little bit better. Um, but overall, that power is a lot more than the 5.5 watt laser that I had before. The, you could definitely tell the difference. So. Overall, pretty happy with the unit. The only thing that I really don't like about it is the documentation. There's um, an extra power port that's on the module, but there's nowhere in the documentation that I can find the pinout or the type of connector that you use to use it, so I'm not using it yet. And it's supposed to stabilize that power output for longer cuts, which would be great. Um, hopefully in the future I can contact support and they can give me the details that I need to utilize that. The other thing I didn't like about the documentation is the um, focus height adjustment. One place it says three millimeters from the radiator and another place it says five. Um, and from what I found is five seemed to work pretty good on engraving and three was a little better for the cutting, but I haven't really found that sweet spot quite yet. Um, a little more testing, a little more use of it. I'm sure I'll get it down. Um, but overall, the unit, if you're into cutting like I am, it's great. And I think it's really good for the price. Now, if you're into engraving more, you might look at the 4640 unit. It has a little longer focal range and I, it's supposed to be a little bit better for engraving as compared to this. This is more focused towards cutting. All right. So that being said, if you're interested in either one of those units, I'll have links down in the description so you can purchase them. Hopefully you can get a deal on them and it'll help me and the channel produce more videos. So the next video that we're going to have is I'm going to be making a new laser engraving machine, cantilever, cantilever style, with this E40 laser. Um, I'm going to use this laser to cut all the parts to make that uh, happen. So that ought to be pretty cool. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. Make sure you like, 
and turn on notifications. And we'll see you next time on What's Next DIY.